Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. As always, I am glad to be filming this morning and making this video for you all to view. One of my subscribers has asked me to introduce you to our Boston Terrier. She saw them, she got a quick glimpse of one in one of our previous videos. So, um, Barbara, this is for you and all the other viewers that are dog lovers. Okay, so uh, first of all, this is my husband, Wes, and uh, these are our two dogs. This is Molly. She's our little female Boston Terrier. We've had her a long time. She's brought a lot of joy to our lives, and she and Milo do like to hang out here in this room while I'm filming. This is Milo. <laughs> He's not little. <laughs> so anyways, oh. <coughs> We thought we were getting a puppy, and we did, but he was a big puppy, and these people had him, and and they, um, he did, I guess maybe the best way to put it is he didn't fit real well with their other dogs, and they wanted to, they, you know, to sell him to someone, and, and, um, so we ended up with him, and he's been a good, a good boy. He's kind of naughty sometimes. He likes to get in the trash can, and tear up dryer sheets and see he, he knows and the word the dryer couch. sheets eat, eat the, the couch. couch and if you leave something he thinks every toy is his he can destroy a a soft toy in about 30 seconds but he really isn't anything but a great big bundle of love and molly we inherited molly from a little neighbor and uh She's just a little princess of a dog. She's not naughty like Milo. <laughs> no. But they're both good dogs and we enjoy them. <laughs> okay. On my design wall behind me are just the projects that I've made throughout these videos. And there's a few random blocks that I've made that I like to keep up on my design wall. But I've shown you these before. So today's topic is fabric decorated gift bags. I've been making these for years, probably since 1993. I, I used to do craft fairs and I sold these bags at craft fairs and then also as my kids got older and into 4-H and I was their leader, we made these for fundraisers during our bake sales and I just continued to make these and they've never lost their popularity. People really enjoy getting gifts in these bags and it sure is fun giving them in these bags. Now these are some of the bags that I've made. Some of them are more recent than others. Now these are all holiday themed. I wanted to show you these since Christmas is coming up. But uh, let me just show you a few. Now this one is just a gingerbread man I made yesterday. They're just so fun and cute and just adorable to give gifts in. This is a stocking. This is one of my favorites that I've made over the years. And this is just a new little whimsical Christmas tree. It has a little star on the top, if you can see that. Let's see. Oh, this is another one of my favorite ones. It's mittens. So those can be used uh, just for the holidays, not necessarily Christmas. And then this one is just another gingerbread man version. Okay, let's go over some of the materials that you're going to need to complete this project. First of all, you will need some fabric since we're using fabric to decorate the bags. I just used fabric out of my scrap bins when I've made large batches of bags. I will use yardage then but for this project I just used my scraps. You'll need um, some type of fusible web. I use the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. This is just for craft pro this is just for craft projects. This is not something that you're going to use for sewing, just crafts. You will need a corded craft bag. And these are 10 and a half by 8, and you can get these at Hobby Lobby. I typically buy them in a bundle, and I use my 40% off coupon. You will need some paper scissors and some fabric scissors. I also use 
an old dish towel to help protect my ironing board and I'll go over that in a little bit and then you will need just a larger just piece of fabric to assist with ironing. Now for some of the embellishments I like to use ribbons for the uh, handles to help decorate those. I used to use raffia a lot but I kind of like the color that the curly ribbon offers and just the texture that it offers to the front of the bag especially once it's been curled so I have some curly ribbon and that comes in a variety of sizes and types and you can get those at Walmart or Hobby Lobby you probably have some of that around your house um, another thing that I use for embellishment are these paint painters pens these are medium point and I really prefer to use the medium point these are black and white to do the eyes and the icing on the gingerbread man you'll also just need a pencil you know these mechanical pencils are one of my favorites and I also just use a sharpie now the next thing I want to talk about are patterns now you can get free downloadable printable patterns off the internet or you can use your silhouette if you have that or a Cricut also you can just draw them so let me show you a few this one is just one that I drew and I started out the first drawing was too big so then I drew it a little bit smaller now this was my original drawing but because we need the reverse I just flipped it over and I traced on the lines that shown through the paper and that's why you need the Sharpie marker so that you can see it on the back all right and then I just copied it so this is actually the reverse and then I just write on there Christmas tree pattern so I know this is the pattern that I will be tracing I don't have to reverse it because I've already reversed it this is a clip art that I got off of the internet and it was free this was also one I was going to use but ended up not using except for the little star and then this is another one that I drew and I just searched around the house for circles I was going to do a bag with ornaments on it and then I changed my mind so you can really get patterns anywhere you can probably use some of the patterns out of your holiday quilt books but I don't believe you can resell those those have to just be for personal use and of course these that I've made these are all for personal use okay the next thing you want to do after you've prepared your pattern is you have to trace the pattern onto the fusible web now the fusible web has two sides it has a paper side and then it has kind of a rough textured glue side and when you lay that down you're going to lay the textured glue side down and be sure you do that correctly otherwise when you put the heat from your iron to that it's going to really mess up your iron so with the glue side down you're just going to trace your pattern with a pencil all right and when i put these on there I try to get them pretty close together so that I don't waste fabric or the paper so then I would just go ahead and trace those so it would end up looking something like this okay the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna trim about a fourth an inch all the way around your design and again be sure you're using the reverse the next thing we're going to do is I just like to lay a an old towel down to protect my ironing board from glue that might leak through the fabric and get on your board I've been doing this for years and that has happened before so I don't like my ironing surfaces to get all gummy so I always do that and you always want to read the instructions on whatever heat and bond 
webbing that you use. This isn't the only kind that you use, but this is what I've used for years. But you want to be, again, be sure to read the instructions. For example, this only calls for, this calls for no steam and a medium setting on your iron. It says when we fuse it to the fabric, when we fuse it to the fabric, we're just going to leave it one to two seconds. So we're just going to go 1001, 1002, then we're going to pick it up and set it back down, 1001, 1002. And that's all it takes to fuse this to the paper. Then of course we're just going to cut these out with our scissors right on the line. Okay? And I've already done that, so I have that to show you. Today we're going to be working with the mitten pattern, and it just has two pieces. Okay, so there is a front and a back side to the bag. You don't want to use this side. You want to use the front side. And I use the front side, or I call this the front side, because I don't like to fuse over that crease there and this side doesn't have a crease like that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to position, we're gonna remove the backing, and we are going to, this already has been moved, we're gonna position our mittens on there. Now the instructions on my fusible web say at when you're ironing this onto the project, you're going to hold it for six seconds. So again, I know I've said this, this is the third time, but be sure you are reading the instructions. You don't want to scorch your project, but you do want it to be hot enough to adhere to the paper back. And then the next thing that I do is I just take a piece of fabric and I cover up the project. And I try to use a light piece so that I can see. Now remember this time we're gonna put them down, we're gonna hold it for the count of six seconds. Okay, you're gonna lay the iron down, you're not gonna press on it, you're gonna 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006. Then you're gonna move it, you're gonna count in your head, you're going to move it again and move it again. You do not want to press hard on here and I'll show you in just a second why I use that sheet of paper. And then I just kind of go around the edges to make sure everything got adhered down good. Okay. So let me show you a couple of reasons why you don't want to push down hard. Number one, if you push down hard, the edge of your iron is going to leave a dark line like that. Can you? I hope you can see that. Or right there. The other reason, I don't have an example to show you, but if you iron these bags without this piece of paper, it leaves a marked line. I don't know what it is that does that. There could be some wax, some sort of wax or finish on the bag, but it, it will cause a little glue looking line there. So that's why I cover this up like that. Okay. Now I had just some little red and white ribbon that I'll use for embellishments. You can use buttons. Sometimes I've used those little bells and just hot glued them on there. So then this will just be hot glued on there. Alright, so the last thing I wanted to show you is how I put the curly ribbon on. I just get some strands, and I get pretty long strands, and I haven't curled it yet, and I just tie it onto the bag. Alright, and then I just take my scissors. Those are my then I'm just going to take my paper scissors and I'm 
just going to give those a good curl. All right. I like for him to have a nice kinky little curl there. He's got a little bit of static in him this morning. Just going to curl those out there. One more. These are so easy and so fun to make. And people just love, they just love getting gifts in these cute little bags. And there you go. They're just so adorable. Now for this video, I focused on a holiday theme, but you can do all kinds of themes for these bags. I've done Thanksgiving where I've just decorated with, with pumpkins of different sizes and shapes. I've also done Valentine's Day. You can do Halloween. And then I've also done a quilt theme and I didn't show any of those today because it's the holidays and I wanted to focus on the holidays, but you can use silhouettes of vintage sewing machines. You can just use the words quilt across it. You can use just all kinds of patterns for the front if you want to give a quilt friend a gift. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope if you make these you'll have as much fun making them as I have over the years. If you enjoyed today's video please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always please leave comments. I love to get comments and read those and I do try to respond to each comment that's posted. Now my next video will be on a couple of specialty rulers that I just recently bought. I'm going to try those out and let you know how those are working and show you how to use those rulers in my next video. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, have fun quilting.